Hi, I'm Dr. Eric Cobb with ZHealth Performance, and today we're beginning a series of videos on tennis elbow pain. If you are new to Z Health, we are a brain-based education company. We work with doctors, therapists, and movement coaches from around the world. So if you find this information interesting, make sure to check out our free resources and subscribe to this channel. Okay, let's talk about the elbow. If my palm's facing forward and I have pain on the outside, that is commonly called tennis elbow, or known, it's also known as lateral epicondylitis. If I have pain on the inside, it's called golfer's elbow or medial epicondylitis. We're gonna focus on the tennis elbow side for the next few videos. Now, when we look at this uh, particular issue, it can be incredibly problematic if you have it. So the pain can be very severe to the point that, you know, turning a doorknob, picking up a cup of coffee can be excruciating. And you do not have to play tennis to develop tennis elbow. It's just uh, something that sometimes shows up with poor technique in tennis. But basically what we see as a big driver of this is anytime we're gripping really hard and then we're going through forceful flexions and extensions of the wrist. So what we wanna talk about throughout these set of videos are exercises that we have found to be extremely effective. But before we dive into that, I wanna give you some ideas about how we look at this from a brain-based perspective. Whenever we do functional MRIs and look at the brain of people who are suffering from tendinopathies, whether that's the elbow, the knee, the ankle, what is very commonly showing up is a lack of coordination in the brain's control of flexors and extensors. In order to move well, our brain has to excite some muscles and inhibit others. And in tendon issues, we see that the capacity of the brain to do that has been diminished. This is opening up some extremely cool approaches that are starting to maybe give us more of a window into how to solve these tendon issues. Because whenever you look at the research literature, there's really no consensus on what do I do for tennis elbow? You can find a hundred different versions of exercises, but in general, what we see is that not every exercise works for every person, and it can take a long time for this to heal. Whenever you look again at the research, about 89% of people will be out of pain within one year, but one year of not being able to play tennis or use a hammer at work or type on your keyboard or pick up a cup of coffee without pain is a very long time. So we're gonna show you based on our experience and what we know from a lot of this current research, some approaches that are very effective. So the first thing that I'm gonna have you do is you're going to need to have something available to you on your iPhone, your iPad, or whatever device you have, and that is a metronome that gives you some visual input. I like to use one called Pro Metronome. Um, I, I'm not affiliated with the company, it just works well. And I'll show you how we're gonna use this in a minute. This is based off uh, research from Dr. Ebony Rio, a brilliant researcher looking at tendon problems. And she's one of the first people to help us identify this idea that the brain is not synchronizing movement correctly. And she has offered a very elegant solution because what we do know about the brain is that there is a big difference when I am self-regulating or self-timing my own movements versus when something else is giving me a rhythm to move to. So she's developed a whole approach called tendon neuroplastic training. You can go read about that. You can Google it. It's a pretty simple idea, but it's a great brain tweak to add to the hundreds of exercises that are out there. We have seen great results by adding this into what we already do. So I'm gonna just talk about this briefly and I'm gonna show you my first favorite exercise to get people started for dealing with tennis elbow pain. So in general, what we're gonna be doing is we're gonna take our metronome and we're gonna set it to 20 beats per minute. If I start the metronome, you'll be able to hear it probably through my mic. And you can see I'm getting a visual representation as the metronome is moving. Now, why we would use this is let's say I was doing kind of a classic therapy exercise, have dumbbells in my hand, and I'm just doing flexion and extension motions. Rather than timing them myself or counting to 1001, 1002, 1003, instead I'm going to listen and follow visually. Whenever we do this, this helps retrain uh, the brain to synchronize motor activity appropriately. So the idea here is that any exercise I show you in these videos, I want you to try to, whenever possible, to do it with a metronome, particularly a metronome that offers you auditory and visual guidance. Because anytime we add in these additional drivers of stimulus that require the brain to work a little bit harder than self-time motion, we tend to see really good effects. Another thing to remember is that whenever you're doing any tennis elbow work, it's incredibly important that you test and then retest after the exercise. So let's say right now, if you put your arm out, you extend your elbow and you make a fist, you go, ah, that's a level five pain or a level eight. You're gonna do the exercise, 
with a metronome or whatever we're doing, and then you're going to retest. What we should see is that the exercise immediately diminishes or at a bare minimum does not increase the pain level. Any exercise that I suggest that increases the pain level, you probably wanna remove from your menu for a period of time and try to find other approaches uh, throughout here that are more useful for you. So again, we're trying to keep the pain level the same or more preferably diminish it. All right, so our first exercise is a very interesting one. It's very simple. Instead of working on the extensors themselves, we're gonna work on their counterparts, which are the flexors. Because often, again, what we see is hard gripping, which requires the flexor muscles to become very active, can sometimes overpower the extensors or disrupt the rhythm to stabilize the elbow. So one thing that we're gonna do is I'm gonna show you how I want you to grip. So we're gonna take a band and we're gonna attach it at a low point. I just have a band, a light band. It's sitting on a kettlebell, all right? It's attached to a kettlebell and it's gonna be off to my side. Now, the most important part of this particular exercise is we want to avoid a heavy grip, which is why I like to use bands and not dumbbells for this first exercise. So you're gonna take your band and you're basically gonna hold it like a bear claw, all right? We're not making a full fist. We're letting the band sit against our fingers. We're curling the tips and we're lightly laying our thumb over it. All right, so you can think about a paw or a claw grip instead of a fist. Now from here, I want the band basically pulling directly to my side. And once I have a little bit of tension, I'm gonna turn my hips 45 degrees or so to the band. So now my shoulder's back behind me. I have my little bear claw grip. And now I'm simply going to begin doing some wrist flexion movements. All right, wrist flexion meaning I am pulling the band along the line of my pelvis. I'm not turning my wrist and pointing backward. I want this to follow the line of the pelvis. Now, as I do this, it will probably be common for you to want to make a fist. Avoid doing that. Keep that bare paw grip as you go through the exercise. Now, the reason that we're doing this is that on your symptomatic side, often one of the muscles involved in your flexor groups becomes a little bit overactive compared to some of the supportive muscles. If I use this particular grip, what I should feel is a lot of work happening along the thumb side of my forearm and along the pinky side of my forearm and not very much happening in the middle, which is what we're trying to achieve. If you feel a lot of muscular fatigue or effort in the middle, we need to keep working on your grip or pay attention to the angle. Now, if we were to combine the two, I would turn my metronome on and then I would be doing a flexion for three seconds and then back to neutral for three seconds. So again, every time we do any exercise, we're gonna be using the metronome, again, to try and help the brain regain some capacity to coordinate the movement. So after I've done that, I'm gonna do three sets of 15 with 30 seconds of rest. During each rest period, go back and retest and see how your elbow feels. This is one of my great, or one of my favorite starting exercises for people, and it often works very, very quickly. So give this one a shot and let us know how it works.